As Rivian opens up more crucial Adventure Network fast charging locations, how close are we to getting access if we're not a Rivian driver? Let's take a look in this episode of Quick Charge. Over the summer, we had the pleasure to go to Virginia and enjoy the Skyline Drive Trail in Shenandoah National Park. Now, at either end of this and in the middle, there are Rivian Adventure Network charging locations. So this is the exclusive fast charging network that only Rivians can use at the moment. And they are opening up in a wide variety of places. We took a look at this location in Waynesboro, Virginia, which is right at the end, the southern end of the Skyline Drive. And uh, would have been a nice place to use. We had uh, the ability to go over to Staunton, Virginia, and uh, use the Electrify America there. But this was right outside the southern end of Skyline Drive, and uh, would have been a very easy place, aside from the storm here, to juice up and get back on our way. And now we start to see reports that uh, Rivian has completed its uh, trail of Rivian Adventure Network supporting the Blue Ridge Parkway, which is just to the south of Skyline Drive. As you finish Skyline Drive, you see the entrance at the north end for the Blue Ridge Parkway. So Rivian has a pretty substantial presence here in Virginia and up around the Mid-Atlantic all the way down to Georgia. At the moment, the time of recording, we're around just short of 50 Rivian Adventure Network charging stations, and about a quarter of those, roughly, are in that East Coast area from the Mid-Atlantic down to Georgia. So they're serving these national parks with the focus on Shenandoah, Skyline Drive, and the Blue Ridge Parkway, and they're serving it very well. There's also another one at the northern entrance up in Front Royal, and that would have been another pl nice place to stop. Again, we've made this trip work with no problems. There's charging along the way, but these Rivian Adventure Network locations are designed to serve these people going out into the areas where you might want to hike, take those outdoor adventures and very on brand for Rivian itself. So naturally as a driver of a fast charging CCS1 EV we are looking to uh, ask the question what are we going to do with these? Will we be able to use these at any point? Will they open them up or are they going to stay exclusive to Rivian? Then an interview with the tech podcast WVFRM earlier this year in April uh, CEO of Rivian RJ Scarringe talked about opening up the Rivian Adventure Network to other users uh, declined to give a deadline or a timeline for that so we're not sure on that but uh, it does look like they can receive funding once they open that it is just a ccs1 connector at the current time although rivian does plan to join that move to the tesla connector as it is standardized towards the j3400 standard which is still in the works with the sae but the rivian adventure network even as it stands would be a pleasant addition to fast charging and that is one of the things that scaringe touched on in the interview view was the current state of public charging as everybody knows it has a lot of work to go with it and there is a lot of funding flowing that way so Rivian is financially incentivized in that way to get involved it also has the looming access to the supercharger network which will put more pressure on the Rivian network to then be open to others well in some form or another and there's really only the software locking going on there as I say with the CCS1 already available and potential to put different connectors on the ends of some of those usually you're seeing about six fast chargers in any one place on the Rivian Adventure Network site. So there's uh, lots of positions that uh, Rivian is in that people would like to have charging. And if they do prove to be able to open that up to other EVs successfully from Tesla and then over to anyone else who's still using the CCS1 standard, that obviously provides a big boon both for Rivian in the funding sense and the PR side, and also for other EV drivers as we get more places to use, especially in these locations that are serving popular tourists tourist areas. Rivian is definitely serving those kind of areas like the Blue Ridge Parkway, Skyline Drive, the Appalachian Trail, almost covering 500 miles of that route now. So that's done at a time when it's still exclusive and the ability to use it is very limited to those small number of vehicles, the R1T or the R1S as those roll out. But obviously Rivian is pushing more vehicles onto the roads and it's trying to balance the needs of new customers and keeping them happy, giving them something that is uh, a boon of owning the brand versus leaving these kind of scarce resources as fast charging currently is for many users and leaving them broadly empty unless you are a Rivian driver who's in the area and able to take 
advantage of them. So no definite answers yet, but you can see the funding starting to flow through and Rivian is not going to miss the boat on that one. So look towards that start of 2024 as a time when Rivian is going to be either making announcements or possibly even immediately opening it up. Could be a limited rollout of sites first of all. There will be a lot of technical considerations to go through as we've seen with the limited Tesla Magic Dock Pilot, but it's going to be an interesting time. So keep an eye on Rivian. We hope that that exclusivity isn't going to last forever as we talked about in this video several years ago. So take a look at that if you want to go back in time and listen to me pondering when or whether the Rivian Adventure Network would ever be in the ground and available to other users. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you got information from this and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much.